Hi, good evening, good evening. Thank you, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, we are delighted to have you here, and we are delighted to be here to be part of the Frist Friday. I am Beth Huff. I'm a member of Central Tennessee Dressage Association, and CTDA is so pleased and proud to be a part of what's going on here tonight. If you are like many of our friends and family, when we say, I ride dressage, we get kind of a blank stare. And many people don't understand or don't know what dressage is. They pretty much know horses that race or horses that jump or what they do in Shelbyville at Celebration every year. But we do something very different. We do dressage. So tonight, I hope that you'll learn a little bit, that you'll be introduced to dressage. If you know a little bit about it, that you'll learn a little bit more about it and that you will have a great time with our demonstrations. So let me say, what is dressage? The word dressage comes from the French, which means training. Its purpose is to develop the horse's natural athletic ability in order to make it calm, supple, and attentive to the rider. Historically, the first horseman's manual was written around 1300 BC when horses were mainly used to pull chariots. Around 400 BC, a system of training horses was first documented by the Greek writer Xenophon as horses had to be obedient and maneuverable in preparation for battle to outwit their enemies. Some of the movements we see in today in modern dressage came from the evasive moves that were necessary for execution on the battlefield. So then we skip to the middle 1500s when the Spanish riding school began in Vienna, Austria. Today, the Spanish riding school is one of the greatest in the world where classical dressage movements are still taught and performed. Many of you have probably seen the movie Miracle of the White Stallions, which documented the true story of the rescue of the famous white Lipizzaner stallions in World War II with the help of the United States Army. It's a fabulous story, it's true, it's a great movie, and I highly recommend that you watch that. Today, dressage is an Olympic discipline, and those horses are trained to the very highest levels. They demonstrate the fluidity of the different gates in straight lines and circles, and move gracefully and obediently in place, sideways and diagonally. A spectator should not be able to see the commands given to the horse by the rider. Harmony and elegance of movement of the horse-rider pair is emphasized. And that is why dressage is often referred to as horse ballet. Dressage is divided into progressive levels to allow the horse's mental focus and physical demands. You will see some of those progressive gates demonstrated here tonight. It is performed in a rectangular arena with letters along the sides. Attire is traditional and conservative to complement the harmony of horse and rider. We hope you will enjoy our stick dressage horse exhibition tonight. We would have loved to have brought our horses here, but couldn't quite do that. So we uh, hope that you will bear with us as our riders demonstrate many of these beautiful gates and movements of the dressage horse. And now, we'd like to start our exhibition. And you may need to, uh, you're right in the way of a galloping horse. So you may need to as, at least allow them to get into the arena and then you can get comfortable. <laughs> Fugit is in this corner 
riding Don Juan's Beating Hearts of Passion, and Elizabeth Pretty is on Liberace. Give them a big hand. All right, thank you very much. We are so happy you're here. Um, we will be showing you some uh, beginning movements of dressage with our horses here. We couldn't bring the real thing, so, but the stick horses look really lovely tonight. And they are very well trained. One of the things you have to remember is it takes a long time to get a dressage horse to perform all the movements that you're gonna see tonight, but we actually accomplished it in one week. So. <laughs> Anyway, let's start with uh, a, just a quick explanation of what the gates are, and then we'll do a couple of demos, and then we'll do our horse quadrille, which means four horses are gonna be wa walking and trotting and catering to music. So we have three gates. Let's start with our three gates. We have a walk, we have a trot, and we have a canter. Our first quadrille is gonna be a canter quadrille, so we wanna demonstrate to you what some of the canter work will look like. So we have Nan here in the first corner, and she's going to show you that we have a right lead canter. So why don't we start with a right lead? So you can see, this is right lead. You see how the right leg is going more forward? And then she's gonna change to a left lead, please. See how the left lead goes more forward with the left leg. So this is the basic canter. The next thing we're gonna do with this canter is we're gonna switch. So the canter is a three beat and it has a suspension phase as we call it. And in that third beat where all four legs of the horse are off the ground, we can switch leads. And we call that a flying lead change. And when we start really educating our horses, they can do it every two strides, every three strides, every four strides, etc. So we call that tempi changes and that's what Nan is gonna show us next. So we're gonna start with three please. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. And we're dancing together with our horses. Thank you, Nan. Now we're gonna up it a notch, right? What do you think comes next? The twos. All right, let's do twos, and then when you come back, we wanna see ones. That's the ultimate. Okay, can you count? Two, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Well done. And now she's going to turn around and she's going to show us the ones, which means the horse changes cantilates every single stride and it looks like skipping almost, doesn't it? And that's a very difficult exercise. Not for the stick horses, but for the real ones. <laughs> Thank you. All right. The next thing we're gonna show you, because you're also gonna see that in our canter quadrille, is a movement called a half pass, and after the half pass, a canter pirouette. So a half pass means that the horse goes forward and sideways at the same time. So I would ask Elizabeth to please show us a half pass, two X. So you see the horse is cantering and it's going sideways at the same time. And now it's at X, and now we're gonna ask for a pirouette. That means the horse canters on the spot. Let's do another round, please. Yes, and now she's gonna do another half pass back. Thank you very much. So you might wonder why is that important, right? So think about where dressage came from. Dressage came from military, dressage came from hunting, dressage came from riding out in the woods. If you went to the exhibit, you probably saw a lot of that. And what that does is, this kind of movement is brings the horses, you know the horse has a lot of weight in the front. Think about it, it has the head and the neck, so two thirds of the weight are naturally in the front. So the horse is like down here. But what we wanna do is we wanna bring it up and back so that we have utmost maneuverability. And maneuverability means that the horse can move wherever we want it to, whether it's jumping over a fence, whether it is doing a pirouette as you just saw, or whether it is uh, galloping down the field. So in either case, we want the horse that is maneuverable and that is off this front end, because then I can turn and point it wherever I want to. That's why this is an important movement, because all the movements that we do have a purpose. All right, so 
Without much further ado, though, let me show you and introduce you to our first piece. So, writers, if you please would go into position for our Canta Quadrille. So, a quadrille is something that the Spanish writing school, oh, by the way, I think I forgot to introduce myself. So, I'm Katarina, and as you can tell, I'm not from Tennessee, but I'm from Vienna, Austria, and this is where the Spanish writing school is. And so the kind of quadrille that you see tonight is the kind of quadrille you would have to fly to Vienna to see with the real Baroque Spanish writing school horses. But you're lucky, you actually get to see them tonight. All right, I think we are ready for the music. <laughs> a circle onto the center line in pairs changes. And another pirouette. This time to the right. Thank you. That was awesome. So you probably got a pretty good feeling for the tempo, and this is really what we achieve when we ride with our horses. We want harmony, we want understanding, ease of movement, we want horses that are supple and happy horses, and that's what the dressage exercises do. They are like athletes' horses, right? And as, as people have to train and get more flexible and get stronger, so do the horses, and that's really what dressage is all about. Dressage means training, and we have uh, different exercises that get more and more advanced and ask more and more of the horse as we go along. All right, so this was our canter. So the next one is going to be our trot, and I'm going to have a couple of demos as well just to illustrate what we're going to be showing you. So the first thing that we want to talk about is impulsion. That's a very important word in our dressage training. If we don't have impulsion, we really don't have anything else. And Shelly, I think you're going to show us what it looks like when we have a horse that has no impulsion. So you can kind of see it's dragging its feet, right? There's not much going on there, not much we can work with. So let's put it up a notch, please. Let's have a little bit of impulsion. So it's still not really exciting, but now let's really rev it up. And we have purpose, we have energy, we are going somewhere, right? That's what we want in our horses. Thank you. That was a really good demo. So impulsion is one important concept for us. But we also have a second important concept that's called engagement and collection. And those three together, as we advance our horses, help us or help the horse perform all the exercises that we ask with more and more ease. So let's talk about engagement. Who here does yoga, pilates, anything that requires core strength, right? So I see a few people. All right. So if you think about engaging... We call it engagement, right, for a purpose. You engage your core, you tuck your pelvis. Do you, I'm going to do it this way. I engage my core, I tuck my pelvis. Do you see what's happening? I'm kind of putting more weight on my hind end, and I'm really, and that's strangely enough exactly what the horse does. He has to engage his core, 
and tuck his pelvis to achieve collection. So we're now going to have Mariah show us from a school horse. That means a horse that has usually between at least six and eight years of training can perform all the way from the most engaged and collected trot, which is called a piaf, on the spot, engaged with a lot of movement. The next one up is a passage, which is a trot in slow motion. Also takes a lot of strength to be able to keep that air time. Then we go into a collected trot, which is still an elevated trot, but not nearly as much suspension as you can see. Yeah, turn, thank you. Then we go into our working trot. Working trot is more like what you think about, like if you jog, if you run regularly, like your tempo that you can go for a very long time. And we're not letting let Mariah go for much longer. <laughs> and then we get into our medium paces. So now we are covering more ground, as you can see. And then the next diagonal, please, an extended trot. Utmost ground coverage and also airtime. Thank you very much, Mariah. <laughs> All right, so without much further ado, now that you've seen the different paces, you will also see them in our next piece, which is our trot piece. We're going to start with a piaf, and I'm going to um, mention as we're going, yes, please go into position, thank you. As we are going, I'm going to mention what the individual movements are. This is a very famous piece, by the way. If any of you are ever watching the New Year's Day concert on NPR or any of the other radio stations, uh, this is called the Rodetsky March from my hometown, Vienna. Uh, Johann Strauss wrote this piece, and it's a very popular piece, and you are very much encouraged at the right times to be clapping along. So we always like a little encouragement for our writers here. Thank you very much. Okay, we're ready for the music. Woo -hoo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Get excited. And a piaf. And now we're going to see a passage. And then a half pass. That's the time to be clapping. That's right. And then a free loop serpentine. Great job, guys. And a half pass. And then transition. Yeah, now we're quiet. And we're going to do a shoulder in. Shoulder in. And just keep going with your shoulder in. And then we're going to do lengthen down the long side. Into your figure eight right away. Onto the center line. After this, and a half pass down the long side onto the center line. It's okay. And onto the center line, and into a passage. Into a half pass. Serpentine and clapping, yes, it's allowed. Back onto the center line and the passage. Or tempis, 
Yes, Tempis. Ooh. The horses are taking over. Back to you, Beth. Thank you, thank you to our riders and our stick horses. Give them another round of applause. That was awesome. <laughs> we hope and we want you to know that Central Tennessee Dressage Association um, has regular shows all starting. Actually, our first one of the year is tomorrow, so we will go through the fall. We have some... Um, show schedules that we'd love to pass around to everybody. You are welcome to come to any of these shows and watch them. They're great fun. If you have a horse lover uh, kid, or if you're a horse lover kid, please come to these shows, watch them. They're great fun. They're also a wonderful opportunity to volunteer. You really don't need to know much about it to get out there and help and volunteer. So we would love to see you at some of our shows. Please take some of these show schedules and thank you so much. <laughs> All right, and you may pet the horses. <laughs> they don't kick. <laughs>